Hi, this is Sunny Solanki and you are tuned to Coders Column. In today's video, I will explain how to create a dashboard to tune hyperparameters of ML model. Specifically, we will be designing a dashboard to experiment with values of parameters of random forest classifier to get better results. Dashboard will have various widgets to select the values of these hyperparameters. After selecting various widgets value, we will submit the model for training the process. The model will be trained behind the scene and the result of various ML metrics evaluated on this trained model will be displayed to us on the dashboard. This can help us better analyze the performance of ML model and help us make better decision. Now we will be creating a dashboard using a famous Python dashboarding library Streamlit. So that was a small introduction. Let me first of all show you the dashboard that we are going to create. So as you can see on my screen, I have a sample image open of a dashboard that we are going to create. So as you can see on the right on the left side over here, I have two sliders. Then there is a one drop down and two checkbox. So these two sliders drop down and checkbox help us select uh, various values of uh, the hyperparameters of a random forest classifier. So we can select number of estimators, we can select maximum depth of each tree. We can select how many futures to use when training a particular tree. And we can select whether to use bootstrapping or not. Then I have included one more checkbox, which if selected save model, it will save the model in the current directory. And after selecting this various widgets value, we can click on this button train and it will train the random forest classifier on the selected data set behind the scene and then it, it will display our model's accuracy on test data set train data set we will also display confusion metrics as you can see we will be also displaying a classification report to better analyze the performance of the model and we will also include two other charts which are roc and precision recall curves so this is the one page dashboard or web app that we will create in this tutorial now before we start with the coding of the dashboard uh, let me jump to jupyter notebook so in this jupyter notebook i have included code to load the data set and then train the model and evaluate models performance and save it so over here i will explain you the whole training process and then we will reuse much of the code from this uh, jupyter notebook when we will start creating the dashboard so we can use the code to train the model and we can use the code from this uh, notebook so as you can see at the beginning of the notebook i have highlighted important sections of the notebook and then next i have uh, various python dependencies for this tutorial so we will be needing a streamlit library for dashboard scikit-learn will be used for loading the data set and ml model Pandas will be used for representing data set as a data frame and joblib is a library which will be used to save and load the model and scikit-plot is another library which helps us visualize various ML metrics so confusion metrics, ROC curve, precision and recall curves will be created using this scikit-plot right so first of all I have imported the needed library scikit-learn, scikit-plot, joblib and matplotlib and then I have printed the versions of all of them. So if you want to follow along with me, if you install this version, then you won't most probably face any error. Then I have loaded the data set. So the data set I have decided to use for our purpose is fetch uh, the 20 news groups data sets. So news groups data set has a text of uh, various news articles and those news articles can be divided in these 20 categories now if we can use these 20 categories or if you want to use less number of categories then we can use less number of categories so only for those categories the data will be loaded so in our case i have decided to use these five categories atheism graphics computer graphics autos electronics and politics guns so the data set will have articles from these five categories and after loading the data set so i have used this uh, function fetch 20 news groups from a data set submodule of scikit-learn to load the data set after loading the data set i have divided the data set into train and test sets so 
80 percent of the data set is used for training and the rest 20 percent is used for testing purpose all right so after dividing the data set the next step is to vectorize the data the reason behind vectorizing the data is that now you see this x train and x test these are nothing but uh, list of a uh, list of uh, strings and each string represent one article now all the machine learning models work with real values or float values so we need to convert this text to some float value representation and that will be done using this count vectorizer and it is available from a future extraction sub module of uh, scikit-learn now what this count vectorizer does is that it converts our text data to real values data so input to it is uh, as you can see 20, uh, 2236 uh, articles and output is 2236 by 38000 something met, uh, array and same for test data set so what this vectorizer does is it tokenizes our data and after tokenizing uh, it uh, creates a dictionary of unique words and it maintains the frequency of uh, each words per article so i won't be explaining too much in detail how counterizer works as i expect that the reader has little bit of background on it but if you are interested uh, in learning about count vectorizer then i have a separate tutorial on my website coders column name future extraction so over here scikit learn future extraction from text data over here i have explained in detail how this uh, count vectorizer works so please feel free to check it to learn about how count vectorizer works all right so now after vectorizing the data the next step i have taken is i have loaded a random forest classifier from uh, scikit-learn then i have initialized the model and i have called the fit method with training data set to train our model so i have used x train vec which is the vectorized version of our train data set so this is data features and y train is uh, our target values which are categories five categories of uh, news articles so that was the training the model then we can use the predict method to make prediction of our data set as you can see so i have made prediction on test and train data set over here after making the prediction the next step i have done over here is i have evaluated various ml metrics so i have calculated test accuracy train accuracy i have also calculated confusion metrics and i have also calculated classification reports and printed all of them the functions for all of these are available from sklearn.matrix submodule of sklearn and over here as you can see i have created a confusion matrix figure so for that i have used scikit plot library and i have given it the original labels and the labels predicted by our model next over here as you can see i have created a roc curve so that also i have created using scikit plot and for that i have used probabilities of uh, predictions on test data set so these are for roc curve we have used probabilities and for confusion matrix we had used actual predictions and same goes for uh, precision recall curve for precision recall curve also we have used uh, probabilities so all these three image uh, three charts will be created using scikit plot library and at last in this notebook uh, there is a step of a model persistent so joblib library which we will use has a function named dump and load so dump function we can use to dump any object so in our case i have dumped our trained classifier in the file name rf dump model and we can load that model using load so i have loaded it back again in the memory and then i have evaluated the performance of this loaded model so as you can see it's the same as this one previous one now as you can see from the result that the train accuracy is 100 percent whereas the test accuracy is only 93 percent so this is a kind of uh, example of an overfit model which is doing too good for a train set but not that good for a test set so 
in the dashboard that we will design we will try different values of parameters to bring the accuracies of train and test set almost same so it, it doesn't look like that the model has overfit on train data all right so at references i have included references to various uh, tutorials on my website so if you are interested in learning scikit plot in detail then you can visit this tutorial scikit plot and then if you are interested in random forest then i have a detailed tutorial in random forest as well also if you want to learn about various ml metrics that we calculated in our tutorial then you can visit this tutorial as well and I'll, i also shared with you the future extraction tutorial so i will include the link to all of these uh, tutorials in the description section so please feel free to check it so that was a small introduction to the training of model part let's go ahead and start with the coding of our dashboard all right so as you can see on my screen i have my id open so i'll be using a uh, visual studio code for uh, coding our dashboard but you're free to use any other editor so i have saved the code to my dashboard in the file name streamlit underscore ml underscore dashboard dot pi over here as you can see and i already have a some amount of code present in this uh, file so the code i have included over here is the code to train the model which i already explained you guys in a notebook so let me explain you over here as well so first of all i imported streamlit as st then over here i have various imports related to scikit-learn so data sets and model selection and vectorizer and all that ml metrics then i have imported uh, scikit-plot then i have included a job lib to dump our uh, trained model and then i have included matplotlib for plotting purpose and over here i have highlighted five categories that for which we are going to load our data set next i have created a function named load and vectorize data set so what this function does is that it simply loads our news group data sets with the specified categories then it divides it in the train and test sets and after dividing it in train and test set it also vectorizes the data features as you can see using count vectorizer and then it returns all the vectorized data set and labels and that i have called over here so we have our train test data split available for training purpose and as you can see i have a decorator over here named cache data so this will cache the output of this function now the reason behind including this uh, decorator is that uh, uh, when you design a dashboard using a streamlit and you include widgets so anytime you change any widget state so let's say you change drop down value or you change a checkbox or slider values what streamlit does is that it runs the whole script from the top so every time you change value it will run the script from top now what happens that if you create a method to load a function to load a data set that takes few seconds then it will take a time to rerun the script every time you change a widget value so to avoid that if that uh, function is returning same data every time then it's better to cache the data and that you can do using this ht st dot cache data decorator so that's the load data set function and then there is a next function which is a train model and this function takes uh, four parameters as input which is n estimator max depth max features and bootstrap <laughs> so these are the parameters of a random forest classifier which uh, we will be providing through widget values so an estimator is a number of trees to be included in a random forest classifier max depth is the maximum allowed depth of each tree of the random forest maximum features is a number of features to select when training a particular tree and bootstrap accepts a boolean value true or false so whether to use all the data examples or select only few examples from data to train the model so these are the four hyper parameters which we will be training or tuning specifically right so this function will train our model with the input parameters and return the new trained model so let's get started with the coding of our dashboard so first of all i will include a simple title of our dashboard so we can do that using title function so i will say random forest 
experiment now over here if you are interested then you can also include various emojis so you can uh, include two columns and inside of that columns you need to specify the name of the emojis so i know i do remember name of two emojis for tea and coffee which i will include but you can check the documentation of streamly there are emojis for many different purposes so that's our title now if you want to color any text of this title that also you can do so you need to press colon and then any color name and let's say i want to color only experiment word so you need to put it inside a bracket so i want to color the experiment with the green color so that's why i have put it like this and currently only four three four or five colors are available red green blue violet and one more color so that was a title above below title i will simply include a small markdown i will say try different values of random forest classifier select widget values and submit model for training various ml matrix will be displayed after training so i have kind of included a small description below title of uh, what this dashboard does all right so now the title and that is done now let's uh, go ahead and create the four widgets so let me show you the dashboard once again so as you can see first of all we will create these four widgets uh, five uh, five widgets actually and one button so let's go ahead and do that so now uh, i will be wrapping all these uh, widgets in a uh, streamlit forms so streamlit forms are almost like uh, html forms so you can submit the button at the end of uh, filling various form values and then some code will run which will train our model so in order to create a form there is a function name form and it accepts a string parameter which is key and you either it's optional parameter so if you want to specify some name then you can specify your so i will say train model and as you can see i have used the form as a this form function as a context manager with python with statement so now i will declare all the widgets inside of this context so first of all i will declare an estimators so in order to create a slider there is a function named slider and the first argument to this function is uh, label so i will say number of estimators second argument is mean value so i want number of estimators to be tried from 100 to 1000 so there is a parameter named max value which we can set so i will set it to 1000 so what this will do it will create a slider and let us select values in the range 100 to 1000 and whatever the value is selected from that slider that value will be available through this variable and underscore estimator right so next let's go ahead and create another slider which is for max depth so max depth i will let it try from 2 to 20 so for each tree we can select max depth which will be in the range from 2 to 20 then next will be max features and max features is a drop down so for creating drop down there is a function name select box so first is the label of that select box so i will say max features and options is the parameter using which you can specify list of uh, drop down options so in our case i will include uh, three options sqrt log2 and none so this uh, max feature will let us select number of uh, features to be included for training each tree of random forest so either we can include square root so if we have like 16 features so square root of that 
four features will be randomly selected to train particular tree we can also use log 2 same way so log 2 will be log of base 2 will be calculated on our number of futures and if you select none then all the futures let's say if you have 16 futures all the 16 futures will be included for each tree so that we can select using this drop down and next is the bootstrap so i will be you know, creating a checkbox so function name checkbox is present over there and i will give it a title bootstrap what this will do it will return either true or false and so if it's true then bootstrapping will be used otherwise uh, there won't be any bootstrapping so in case of a random forest if bootstrapping is true then some subset of the data set uh, will be used to train the tree of uh, random forest and if bootstrap is false then all the data set uh, the whole data set will be used for training so that was our bootstrap and then I will create a one more checkbox which is for saving our model. So if this uh, checkbox is selected, then we will save our model. If it's unselected, then we won't save it. Right. So now we have our five widgets ready. Now we need to include a button. So we can create a button using st.form submit button. Uh, if you are not using form then there is a directly button function over there but as we are using a form over here i need to use the form submit button method function and i will say train okay and let me save the result to submitted so what this will do is that uh, uh, submitted will have either true or false based on whether i have a submitted form or not so let, let's go ahead and train our model so if submitted is true we will simply train our model so i will create a variable name rf classify rf classic and there is a function name train model which we declared over here as you can see and i will give it this parameter which are available to me to these four variables i will say n estimators then i will say max there max features and last is bootstrap so this will return me a uh, trained classifier now what i will do next is that if save model is selected then i will simply call dump function from uh, joblib which uh, i imported earlier we can give our trained classifier to it and we can give name of the file so i will say rf class dot date so this will save our uh, model so now we have uh, widgets in our dashboard and we can also train the model by clicking submit button so and if the save model is selected then a the model will be saved as well let me go ahead and include that train and test accuracy metrics and the confusion metrics then i will show you how our dashboard will look so first of all let me show you so we will create this part of the dashboard first and then i will run the dashboard and show you all right so let, in order to calculate train and test accuracy we need to make a prediction on test data set so i will use our classifier dot predict and I will give it x test back. So this will be y test threads. Same I will do for uh, train set. So this will be train threads. And I will also use predict proba to retrieve the probabilities as well as we'll be needing them when we create ROC and precision recall curve so now we have made prediction uh, let's go ahead and uh, create uh, metrics uh, accuracy metric so in order to do that uh, there is a function name metric which is available from streamlit and this we can use to display any kind of metric so in our case we will use it to display train, train and test accuracies so over here first of all we can give what is the label 
so i will say test accuracy and what is the value so value in our case i will use a formatted string point to app dot format and i will call accuracy score function which is which i have imported from a scikit learn metric sub module to it i will give y test original labels and y test rates the predicted labels and i will multiply the result by 100 because it returns the value in the range 0 to 1 and in order to convert it to percentage format we need to multiply it by 100 so that is the test accuracy same way we can calculate train accuracy as well so next is train accuracy we will give it original train labels and predict rate train labels so now two metrics are created next what we will do next we will create a confusion matrix so first of all i will include a title above confusion matrix saying confusion matrix so confusion matrix as you can see i have used a markdown function to create this title this uh, three hash represents uh, header three of html and uh, so those of you who don't know what markdown is it's a uh, language to create a formatted text and if you have a background with jupyter notebook then you might be already aware of the markdown all right so next we need to create a confusion metric so first of all i will create a matplotly figure object it's figure size six by six six con mat figure next uh, i will create axis object using this figure object add subplot so we will be adding a single axis object one 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 is a one row one column and index one means we have only one chart in our case next i will use scikit plot dot matrix dot plot confusion matrix over here first is actual actual target values which is why test in our case so we'll be creating a confusion matrix on uh, test predictions next is a y test predictions and then we can give axis as well so i will say ax1 now this will create a confusion matrix but in order to include the confusion matrix uh, in our dashboard there is a function name pi plot available from scikit-learn so this function accepts the site now matplotlib figure object as first argument so i will say con mat figure so this will be uh, so this pyplot function let us include any matplotlib figure in our streamed dashboard so and i will set there is a one parameter use container with so i will set this uh, parameter to true so what this will do if we change the size of the container size of the window then it will shrink and expand the width of our chart according to width of uh, device or whatever container so now we have uh, our initial dashboard ready so we have various widgets then we can submit it for training model and we also can display metrics so let's go ahead and test this part of the code so i have already opened a terminal below as you can see and this file streamlit ml dashboard is saved in this folder experiment ml models at my end so in order to run this uh, dashboard a web app i have we can execute a command streamlit run and then whatever is the file name so in our case the file name is streamlit dot file now this will start a server and open our dashboard in a new tab in the browser so let me execute it all right so as you can see the server has started over here and let me go to all right and the new tab has opened which is showing me running so it's running our server as you can see and over here as you can see i have uh, this uh, 
card where I can select number of estimators, max their various parameters of our model. So let me select that. I will keep SQRT, bootstrap, and let's train the model. And I will also select save model. So let me click on train. So as you can see, the model is running. So it completed training. We have 84% training test accuracy, 85% train accuracy. And we have also confusion matrix ready. All right. So as you can see, our initial dashboard is ready. Next, what we will do, uh, we will organize uh, this metric and confusion matrix and these widgets according to the layout which we had for our dashboard. So I will try to organize them like this next to each other. So I will stop the server over here and also let's do ls parameter over here to see whether the model got saved or not. So as you can see rfclassic.dat. So we had selected the checkbox of save model. So our model is saved as well. Right. So let go, let's go and organize the layout. Now in order to put things side by side, uh, there is a function name st.columns, which is available from streamlit. So this function accepts uh, integer value. And what this will do is that it will divide any horizontal space into two equal vertical columns. So it will return me two column objects, which I will save to call one and call two. And I will set the parameter name gap to medium. So this is the gap between two columns. And by default, the gap is small, but I will set it to medium. So there is a little bit of gap. Right, so this will create a two column object. So it will div uh, divide our horizontal space into two columns. So next what I can do, I can use this column objects as a context manager and I can wrap all these widgets inside it. So now what will happen that all these widgets will go in the first column. And then next what I will do is that all this uh, metric and all I will put it in call so all this thing will be going in second column. So we can use this column uh, objects as a context manager with Python with statement and whatever we put inside uh, widgets or anything will be going into that uh, column vertical column. So let me run our server again and show you how the changes look. Right, the server is up and running. Yeah, so let me change this one. Let's train it. Yeah, as you can see now, the values are over here. Uh, as you can see, the all the widgets are on left side and the metrics are on right side. And let's put this test accuracy and train accuracy also next to each other. So we will again use this uh, column function to create a column to put this metric side by side. I will say over here call two one because this is inside of uh, call two, and I say st dot columns. I will say divide the vertical space that call two into another two vertical columns. I will set gap to medium. So what this will do? It will divide this call two again into two equal columns. Area of that call. So over here I will say call two one. And put this matrix test accuracy inside of it and over here call to two. Okay, so train accuracy will be over here. So let's uh, check the changes. So I will rerun. Let's train the function. Yeah, and as you can see now, test and train accuracy are next to each other. So now that we are done with this initial part. Let's go ahead and include the code for a classification report. So next, over here, what I will do, I will include the code for classification report. So first of all, I will include a small header. So three hash and I will say classification report. And then we can use st.write function to write any text output. So this write function is kind of a magic function available from Streamlit. It let us write different kind of objects and string and all of them to dashboard. 
and it will create a proper representation for each object in our case it will be a simply string so i will call this function classification report it accepts the actual target labels and predicted target labels so i think that should do uh, that's all we need for classification report so let's go ahead and test it so let me rerun this and let me click on train yeah so classification report is uh, done and as you can see there is a little bit of formatting issue over here so what i will do the precision recall and all that uh, apps have moved a little bit so let me just modify so instead of uh, write there is a function name code which i will use so let me just use code this code function is generally used to uh, you know show any code which you have in string so i will use it to see whether it's uh, improving the display of our uh, metric or not so let's see i have clicked on train and yeah so this one looks nice but still as you can see precision recall and all that labels have moved a little bit on the left side so i know the reason behind this there is a, some space at the beginning and i think that stability is uh, removing that extra space stripping that extra uh, white space so i have simply added uh, one equal to over here you can add any random character so that space doesn't get removed so let me show you the result again i will click on rerun and i have clicked on train and now you can see precision recall and all that are properly aligned so there was a space over here which streamlit was removing from the string and as you notice that every time i make change to our original source code over here on the left you will be able to see the button name run and auto run so you can click on that button to see the changes it will rerun our dashboard again and again right so now that we have a classification matrix also ready now next is the last thing that uh, we need to do is we need to include precision recall curve and roc curve so let's do that so first of all let's include a label so i will say roc and precision recall curves so that will include header now in order to create it i will copy the code of confusion matrix from here so what i will do instead of confusion matrix figure i will create a new figure name roc figure then i will create a axis object and over here i will call a function name plot roc i will give it original labels and then instead of predicted labels we need to give probabilities of predicted label so i will say y taste props and inside of this uh, conf matrix instead of conf matrix figure i will say roc figure so this is the roc figure created now let me copy that code and use the same code to create a precision recall curve so i will say this figure name is pr figure for precision and recall and over here i will say plot precision recall function and over here so now we have our two functions ready uh, two figure actually ready one for roc and one for precision recall and in order to put them side by side i will again create a two column objects so call one and call two so i will divide a horizontal space into two columns and i will say columns function two and set gap to medium so this gap function uh, gap parameter accepts three values small medium and large so you can select it based on your need again i will say with call one and all the code for roc will go inside call one and all the code for precision recall will go inside of this call two right so now i have saved the code so let me rerun and test it so we are almost done with our dashboard so let me click on rerun over here as you can see and let me train 
okay so we have train trace accuracy confusion metrics classification report and we have also roc and precision recall curves ready so we have almost our dashboard ready now what we can do is that over here we can try different parameter to tune the performance of our model so let me try a few values and show you so let's try 300 estimators and max depth of pi and square root of features and let me train it all right so accuracy has improved a bit the test accuracy went to 83 percent and train accuracy is 87 percent let's increase number of estimators again right let me increase to seven eight let's train it again yeah so now as you can see the accuracy is improved even further so let me try 500 estimators and n max depth and train the function all right so accuracy improved even further almost 90 percent accuracy for a test and 92 percent or 93 percent so for train so model is almost doing good does not seem to be too much overfit on the train data set and you can also analyze the performance of, apart from accuracies over here we have confusion metrics which you can look and we also have a classification report for various classes and we have also a precision recall curve now over here in case of classification report let me include one more change instead of 0 1 2 3 4 let me show you actual categories so that you can do over here by providing target names and target names are categories in our case which is the five different news categories so all right so that changes are done let me rerun the code let me train it again right so as you can see over here now we can see categories of uh, the news articles the same can be done for confusion metrics as well instead of providing the actual labels we need to provide labels like this all that has them and so on so then we will have it in confusion metrics as well but i did not include it because uh, it's all it will make the figure too small over here to fit because labels are quite big right so that's it uh, this is the dashboard uh, which you can use to tune the hyperparameters of your random forest classifier now in our case i used the uh, news uh, groups articles but you can use any other data set as well for your purpose if you are planning to do this tutorial and apart from this uh, there are many enhancements that uh, you can do to this dashboard so in my case i only uh, included four hyperparameters over here because i don't want it to be this tutorial be too 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 long so that's why i included only four hyperparameters but if you have time then you can extend this dashboard and include many other hyperparameters and apart from that uh, i vectorize the text data using count vectorizer so you can include a selection for data as well you can try tfidf or you can let user select between count vectorizer and tfidf vectorizer you can include a drop down which lets user select between those two vectorizers and next you can include uh, widgets for those vectorizers as well so by default uh, they take each token which consists of uh, each word so each token is word but if you want to try, try bigrams and trigrams and so on then you can try those values as well so yeah so that was some suggestions uh, from my side to extend this dashboard further yeah so if you have any doubt or if you have any questions regarding this tutorial then please feel free to let me know in the comment section and if you liked our video and you, and you feel that you learned something new today then give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you are looking to learn more on topics like python machine learning data science and so on yeah see you next time